Welcome. <laughs> We're going to try making some bread today. Uh, this is a new low-carb bread recipe. Um, had to get some apple cider vinegar because we normally don't stock that because my wife doesn't like it. But uh, now I've got it and we're going to try this today. So uh, first things first, we need to get the oven to 350. There we go. And this is actually a recipe that's from an Australian. Um, so they use different sizes of um, tablespoons, which I didn't realize. So uh, some of these measurements are a little bit funky. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the KitchenAid here. And we're going to do one and a quarter cup of almond flour. So we'll see, see how we do that. One and a quarter cup of almond flour. Dish. Close enough. Five tablespoons, and this is five tablespoons again. This is American, American imperial flavored um, tablespoons. That's quite a bit, actually. It's kind of, ugh, of course, it won't fit. Let's see if we got another one. baking powder. Okay. A teaspoon of sea salt, which of course we all know sea salt's the most important thing. I'm gonna use salt salt because hey to me, NACL is NACL. And two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. Two teaspoons. It's not gonna work. I thought my little thing would work, but it doesn't. So we're just gonna do this guy. Probably gonna end up being a little much. We need one and a quarter cups of boiling water and three egg whites. So, bring the water to a boil. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this guy going. This is how I know I'm not a fabulous cook because I don't think about stuff like, hey, let's look and see when this thing says boiling water. Why would you put that at the front? Why would you not put that at the front of the, uh... Okay. At the front of the recipe saying, hey, why don't you boil some water? They're going to need it in a second. Alright, well, we're going to let this boil. We're going to come back in a second and we'll see where that goes. It's getting close enough. We're going to pretend like that's close. So now the other thing we need is we need three egg whites. And of course, uh, the way that you get egg whites is you buy it at the store for a stupid amount of money or you just separate out your egg whites by hand, which isn't really difficult. So basically, all you need to do is just kind of dump the eggs back and forth between the two halves of the shells. Doesn't really matter if you lose a little bit of white um, between the two, but you don't want yolk in your whites. That's the key. Um, and I'm sure As you can see, it, sometimes it'll stick, but you just dump the yolk over into the other side and it kind of plops over. Now when it's this small, sometimes it can be kind of dangerous, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dump the yolk in there. And then any additional whites I get, I can move in here. And as you can see, I'm just slightly behind because we're boiling now. But we're close. So there's our whites. Oop, there we go. So we're good to go on that side. So we have the boiling water, 
and the egg whites all together. Whee! That's fine. So then we'll go ahead and leave the yolks out. Turn this off. Slap this in here. And then go for consistency. Well, unfortunately, not all this stuff is mixed here yet. Consistency seems to be about right. It's not mixed super good. Go ahead and scrape this down. Alright. Let's see if we can get that to go a little bit better. Let's do it better. that. You can see it's kind of gummy a little bit. So it's going to be kind of kind of fun trying to get this all out into a chunk. Now the suggestion here is to put them into a bunch of different kinds of bread like you do a bunch of different like, types. Um, and obviously th this is kind of the idea of putting it on a uh, putting it on a tin like this or a pan like this is to be able to make stuff like individual buns or whatever. Um, if you wanted to make it into bread, you obviously want to use a loaf pan or something. But for today, I'm gonna to just gonna go ahead and cut this into some pieces here, and we're gonna just make some individually sized kind of loaves. Loaves? I can't talk today. So we're just gonna kinda of Push that around a little bit. We're going to see what we end up with. I love how it says you can make it into four to eight pieces of bread, or you can make it into a hot dog and hamburger bun. So I'm kind of wondering how this isn't like a hamburger bun. This looks a lot like a hamburger bun to me. All right, so let's see what these things look like when we get them done. This one is not getting together as well. All right, let's pretend like that's good enough. Our temp, yay! Temp is perfect. All right, lower rack and oven for 50 to 60 minutes. So, lower rack, timer one. 50 minutes. Timer one. There we go. So we'll uh, see what's up in uh, about an hour. Okay. So moment of truth here. We're going to pull these out and see how we do. The recommendation is to It's a little bit, uh, a little bit large. The recommendation is to just thump them. Um, you can see they look kind of, kind of goofy. 
obviously. Even the bottom is hard, which is good. They suggest just thumping them like that, but obviously when you cook something like this, you generally want to test to see if you still have any kind of doughy stuff going on in there. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Let's cut one open and see what they look like. Let's see what, what we got. Now obviously this is so thick, I don't know that you'd want to necessarily use it for a hamburger bun or something, but I guess you could. The other thing I'm going to probably do here is I'm going to cut, try to cut multiple slices out of this guy. Look at that. The internals there. Still a little bit doughy, unfortunately. A lot of these have a tendency to do that. Um, a lot of these kind of breads. Um, so I think what I'm going to do with this is I think I'm going to... Mm, a lot of times you can toast these again, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this one up and then I'm going to toast it and we'll see how it ends up in the toaster. Um, go ahead and finish cutting this one. So one advantage of these gloves is you can use them as a <laughs> hot pad and as a make sure you don't cut your fingers off with a really sharp knife. These Vustoffs are really nice. But again, it's still, it's kind of gommy. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and slap these bad boys in a um, in the toaster. And uh, we'll see how they toast up. See if the internals cook up any crisper than that. Um, generally speaking, that's, that's a kind of a problem with this type of bread. Um, and a lot of times, it'll dry out OK um, if you just let it sit. But, I think I'm going to go ahead and sit these back in here just for a few minutes. This was at 50 minutes. So, let's go ahead and set those back in there while this other stuff is toasting, and we'll see if we burn the crap out of those or if they just cook up a little bit better. Um, and again, one of the things that I noted <clears throat> when it came out, you can see, I tried it on both ends actually, you can see that there's a little bit of, of uh, dough that's kind of sticking there and that that would be the indication that it's a little bit gummy it wasn't just totally coated so I knew that it was going to be um, mostly okay and even this right now is already but you can see it's kind of a spongy result so anyway we'll see what this stuff looks like when it comes out of the uh, toaster and I'm going to grab some butter I'm not a purist. Country crocs fine with me. We'll try this with some butter when it comes out. something in a toaster and it's hot. Well, that outside crust is sounding pretty pretty good. I don't like to mess around. I like to put on enough butter that it melts and then I put on enough butter that then I can still see the butter after all the melted butter is melted in. That's about the right amount of butter for me. Not quite to that gal that lived down the street from us growing up that used to just eat butter right out of the butter dish. I, I haven't gotten quite that far yet, but although I did just lick a piece of butter off my finger, so maybe I have. Anyway! <laughs> so, we'll see how this stuff goes. Not crispy. Pretty good. Still a little bit, a little tiny bit, um, Gami. But that 
That's a crispy piece of bread on the outside there. So, I bet. I bet if you were to make those much smaller, like into regular, like dinner roll size, I think that's the secret. Because then that stuff wouldn't have enough to be so gummy in the middle. I bet that, I bet that would take care of that issue. Let's try another one. Let's see what an extra four minutes or so will do. It's showing better. Showing better. Um, I think the key is that I made these. I just made these too big. I think that you needed to make them into smaller pieces or whatever. But uh, I would say that this is a keeper. Um, definitely good. I mean, the outside, especially when you when you crisp them up in the in the in the uh, toaster there. Uh, this right here, obviously the internals. You can see that it's like there's tons of air in there, so it's very it's not very dense at all. Um, but it is kind of that gummier, which of course is what you expect from something that's mostly egg whites and uh, the psyllium husk stuff. So the psyllium husk pieces, I think, and that's where you get that kind of purple color is from the psyllium husk, so don't freak out if you see it and it's, oh my god, it's purple. That's a feature, feature of these breads. If you have kids that don't want to eat low carb, just tell them you can eat the purple bread. Maybe it'll be freaky enough for them to enjoy it. So Anyway, that's what we got for today. Uh, Psyllium husk bread, pretty good. Um, and again, I think the key here was just need to make the make the rolls smaller, and uh, that would do it. So, have a good one.